the squirrel chart and see. That's a great question. That's it. Uh, yeah. uh, sometimes when you're out on an EDA, like when you're riding a robotic arm, and, uh, and so it's when it's these big motions, and it sometimes can feel like you're going to come off the arm and float away in space. And so you deal with this with training, and that helps you uh, get over it. Over. Hi, Caitlin. Well, if you're riding on a Russian Soyuz, it takes you only about three hours. So we're going to be coming home on the until we splash down in the ocean off of the Florida coast. Over. Hey, Zoe, the coolest thing I have seen in space is going to be able to see it from this vantage point. And when you do, you realize how special a place it is. Over. Caden, that's a great question. It can get awful confusing up here because we go around the Earth 16 times a day. So we have 16 sunrises and sunsets. But we actually tell if it's day or night just by using our watch. And uh, when it's in the morning, we turn on the lights in the space station. And when it's at night, we turn them off. Over. Actually, the space environment is very dangerous, and one of them is a depressurization. That means we start to lose air in the capsule, and if that were to happen, one of the things we can do is we can close the hatches between the different, we call modules, but they're actually rooms, and, uh, and we can seal off that leak. Over. Yeah, that's an interesting question, Sir I don't think I've seen uh, anything really frightening up here. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is when you look out at the Earth and you see this very thin atmosphere and you realize how precious it is that's keeping us all alive down on Earth and that we need to protect it. Over. Well, we are doing lots of experiments up here, over 200, 300 experiments uh, during one increment of about six months. My crewmate is actually on a special diet. He's eating a lot of fish and vegetables and nuts and hopefully that's going to help his uh, immune system because when we're up here, our immune system is what we call compromised, which means we can get sick easier. Over. Isabel, one of the biggest challenges in space is just missing your family. Um, when you're up here, you're, it's very remote and you don't have a lot of chance to talk to them or see them. And so being away from the family is probably the biggest challenge of space. Over. Hey, uh, well, you really start training to be an astronaut when you're your age. Uh, going to school and, and studying hard is very important. And uh, all those things you're learning now come into play when you're an astronaut. Once I was picked to be an astronaut, though, I had two years of training, basic training, and then once I got assigned to a mission, I had another two years. So it took four years of training before I was ready to go into space. Over. Hi, Ruby. Well, when your spacecraft back to the International Space Station, there's this little space between the two that we call the vestibule, and that's that vacuum. And so one of the first things we have to do is put air into there and pressurize it. We equalize the pressure, the air pressure, between our capsule, the uh, space station, and this little vessel.